Team NZ's kinky foils give them advantage as they demolish Great Britain. The first light air challenge we have seen in this America's Cup. Emirates team New Zealand were up against Land Rover Bar. The key moment was the first jabby at the first mark, the rest of the race was history. Team New Zealand have got kinky in Bermuda and it looks to be paying dividends. The Kiwis produced their light air foils for the first time in racing on Friday and showed a distinct advantage against Great Britain that saw Sir Ben Ainsley wave the white flag on the fifth leg and conceded, such were his comparative struggles in the seven knots of wind. While the four other teams on show all had their longer foils for the light winds in action, it's the shape of Team New Zealand's foils that sets them apart. Team New Zealand power away on their foils during a dominant performance against Barr. They have a straight line kink in their curve, rather than the smooth elongated C shape at the bottom of their opponent's foils. There was pre-regatta talk that the Kiwis were quick in the light airs and they showed that against the Brits. Asked what the kink was all about, Team New Zealand skipper Peter Burling wasn't giving much away. We have had those foils for quite a while and they seem to be really good in those lighter air conditions, he smiled, adding that everyone was looking closer at what was best in those conditions. Burling was thrilled with the massive win that keeps Team New Zealand hot on the heels of Oracle Team USA at the top of the table. Team New Zealand streak away from Great Britain early in their America's Cup round robin race on Friday. Oracle were impressive in coming from behind to beat Team Japan and stay on track to claim the bonus point available to take into the America's Cup match. What was noticeable with the Kiwis was their ability to stay on their foils much longer than other teams and also have the stability to give them confidence in their turns. With lighter airs expected to dominate this month, it could be another piece of design genius by the Kiwis. Most of the other teams were falling off their foils at different stages on Friday as they struggled with conditions though, worryingly, Oracle looked slick as as they hunted down Dean Barker's Japanese team. Team New Zealand faced Japan and France on Saturday before a crunch showdown with Oracle on Sunday. While they want to finish top of the table for that bonus point or as top challenger which gives them an advantage of being able to choose their semi-final opponent, Burling made it clear they were also keen to continue to work on the development game in the round robins. Like we have said all along, part of our secondary goal of this competition is definitely to learn and to keep on improving, Burling said. We have definitely been trying different bits and pieces the whole way through so far and I can't see that stopping. I think one of the things for us that was really exciting today was that even though we didn't trace yesterday, we learned a lot out of it. We made some changes overnight and we are really happy with how we are going. We have put a fair bit of work into our light air setup and it's really pleasing to see we are somewhat on the pace, he added in an understatement. Ainsley talked up the Kiwis' speed as he was gracious in defeat. Great Britain got a slight edge at the start, 
but the Kiwis had superior acceleration speed and Modanes lay down on the first reach, forcing him into a shocking foiling jabby at the first mark where he lost power and came off his foils. He lost 300 metres and that was the game, though his speed struggles continued throughout. What happened? He asked on Bard at the time. They are killing us. He explained the circumstances later, we had a pretty big wipeout, stuck the bows in and killed a lot of speed and lost a lot of ground. They were coming at us with space but we had a system failure and couldn't control our dagger board properly. In all fairness to Team New Zealand, they were really going well in these conditions compared to us and they would have more than likely have found a way past us anyway. But it would have been nice if we could have made life a little bit harder, for them. Ainsley explained he pulled out of the race while 6 minutes 25 seconds behind and still on the fifth leg because he had no chance of winning and needed technical issues addressed before the last race of the day against Team France which the Brits just managed to win for a crucial win that has sealed their semi-final position.